should I jump into uh, Firefly 3 here? You're yeah, I'll, I'll let you have me the an, floor. Give me a, okay, I was going to say, are you going to give me an intro or do I have to introduce myself on the uh, subject here? I can do that. I just need to know. I um, will... Uh, no, I, I, think I, I think what you were saying, I mean, people scraping by, right? And you have to ask yourself, what does their budget look like? What is their personal what are their personal mm-hmm. finances look like how are they doing mm-hmm. it you know are a lot you of people, are they for using some people, excel right right are you managing everything through excel do you have personal fine are you tracking everything are you budgeting it correctly um it doesn't have to be a you know multi-million dollar project right you don't have to you don't need the budget for just that you you can budget and do personal finances very easily right and i think firefly 3 makes that easy so i want to reintroduce it and i want to go over accounts now the one thing (laughs) and this may be why we have so many freaking views on the one youtube video i think i described this when we introduced it as a zero-based budgeting (laughs) service (laughs) it's not that okay (laughs) it is not that at all so i think when we went over this the first time i introduced it as a Hey, this is how you use zero-based budget. And I think I went in deep, pretty deep into zero-based budgeting versus just regular kind of accounting. Well, it turns out that was just way off base and out of touch. Mm. I don't know how I ended up doing that or why I thought at one point Firefly 3 was zero-based budgeting. It's, in fact, not. It's just regular budgeting. Um, I don't know if I was thinking of some other service or what I was doing at that point. But if you go back and listen, you're going to hear me talk about zero-based budgeting and all this fancy stuff and why you should use zero-based budgeting over just regular, you know, regular kind of accounting, I'll say, or regular personal finance tools. But Firefly 3 is similar to the others, and I think that's why it makes a lot more sense now as I kind of reintroduce myself into the tool and kind of, you know, accounts, transactions, all of that. But essentially... you know, if you're not aware, Firefly 3 is, in fact, a personal finance tool and tool to manage personal finances. It basically can keep help you keep track of all your expenses on uh, your income so you can spend less and, <laughs> and save more. <laughs> so I think, and this is just to clarify, when I first started talking about Zero Base, it's because that's kind of the first thing he mentions in that blog post of his on why did they, they ask him, why did you build this app? Or he asks himself in the fact, why did you build this? And he says, uh, look, there was at one point in my life where I took all my money and I moved it to my savings account when I got paid. And then every time for the, for the month, everything, I pulled everything out of my savings account at that point. then I took all that money that was left in my savings account. I moved it over. Now it's basically at zero for the next month. Well, it turns out, that's kind of just where he based it off of. That doesn't mean that's how the application is in fact built that way. I think he took the rest of that money and saved it. And that's great. He has it budgeted, but it's a lot different than zero. That's in a nutshell what I described as zero-based budgeting, but that's not kind of how it's done in this application. Um, So just kind of going into the high-level overview, and which I think we covered over a lot of this, so I just kind of want to breeze through it. in Firefly 3, you can, I looked at the architecture and it's basically all around transactions is the one thing I noticed. And I think that you're going to get that with a lot of these services accounting. I know is another service we offer. I think, you know, GNU cash, it's something you can have on your desktop, but it's transaction based. A lot of these are just basic accounting tools. I would, and I don't want to call them basic because there's a lot of stuff you can manipulate and do within them. But in fact, at the end of the day, what you're going to get is accounts, you're going to get transactions, and you're going to have money kind of floating around between all these accounts with transactions. So I really like how Firefly 3 kind of describes their architecture. Um, they have the schemas out there if you're a nerd and you really want to go look at them. Uh, I did, and I found it very, very useful, at least to understand what's going on. Um, but Essentially, what with the transactions, you get some of these features, you know, double entry accounting, you can manage different types of accounts, you can do budgets, you can do piggy banks, is kind of like their special way of saving up for special different accounts um, that's specific to Firefly 3, and then you can predict and anticipate bills. So, again, it, it's managing personal finances, right? Now, what it doesn't do, 
and I think I described this, and I remembered recall describing this for the other other reintroduction. You're not getting stock or portfolio management. <laughs> There's a separate app for that. Uh, you're not doing business finances or small business financing or accounting or payroll management or anything like that. You're not import the imports. They I continue to harp on this. Uh, I think as I've kind of mentioned throughout the show through our last. 40 episodes. They have a data importer. Uh, I've been mentioning it because they're starting to, I think, split it off as a separate service for importing data from Excel, CSV, uh, wherever into Firefly 3. So it's just kind of making onboarding a lot easier, which is really nice. Um, but Splitting again... Splitting off in, in what kind of way? So they have... I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, in the repo, uh, they had... At one point, they had the data importer under just like a tools section Mm -hmm. and now they split it off into its. So instead of the data importer being tracked under that directory in the main repo, they've split it off. They've taken that tool and they now have it, I I believe in their, in its own repo and it's tagged, I think at 3.6.0 as its own latest. Is it, is it a separate service to spin up or is it inside of the, okay. It's inside, it's inside, but I think it's just, tracked via git differently now That's okay kind of what my understanding of it is so I- inside baseball they are definitely trying to make sure that they do right by keeping it up to date and, up to and, date and, yeah. And, and, yeah and and adding functionality by splitting off so that they can work on it better but internally there's no like n- another thing that we would have to spin up for that it's no. it's already inside no. of firefly it's in okay. there yeah okay yep. um but with that uh, you know, some of the features, some of the missing features, some of what's out there. I feel like this one has a lot of traction, this Firefly 3 project. I think people are really concerned about personal finance. Uh, it just hits a lot of people at home. You know, why Why everyone likes to track where they are, where they're at. It's You really got to... It, it, it's, it'd be impressive to just kind of skate by and not track. <laughs> Even if our, you're using Excel, you're still tracking it. Uh, it'd be impressive to just not do it at all. But... Nonetheless, uh, Firefly 3 is a tool to do this. And today I wanted to jump kind of into accounts first. I'm not going to talk on transactions just yet. I feel like that deserves its own topic. But I wanted to get into accounts. And I feel like, you know, as we've described some of these services, I I know we've done the intro for this. We've done the intro for accounting. You basically have what could be described as accounts. Uh, There are four different types within Firefly 3 which are asset, expense, revenue, and your liabilities. And really, I think it benefits if we just kind of cover what each of each is, because I think I read on this one, it's like, oh, you buy a car that that's some people would mark that as an asset. It's like, no, 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 hang on. Your car is not really an asset. It's Mm -hmm. not, there's no, there's no payment to you on Mm -hmm. it. You know, you're not being paid from it. Um, You actually owe money on it. Uh, So, it's going to fall under an expense or a liability just because you have the, let's say $60,000 car. That's not an asset. It's you basically are, it, it, it's not an asset to, to be walking around or driving around in that thing. You might think it is, but you in fact have to pay the insurance on it, the payment on it. <laughs> you know, it, at that point it's almost, it's, it's, you walk off the lot, it's depreciating value. There's no appreciation. So it, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not marked correctly. <laughs> so when when you look at your uh, asset accounts, basically what you're going to look at, you know, cash, your checking account, Firefly 3, I guess, I don't know where this guy's from, but I, I, he really likes including the euro uh, and <laughs> the US dollar. So you can have your checking account in great, you know, in the pound, you can have it in US dollar and then savings accounts, shared checking accounts. Um, the one thing I've, kind of had trouble with uh would be brokerage accounts because they say you know they don't say we're tracking they don't do portfolio management um they say to track it somewhere else but you almost want to track the nominal value of that just as an asset now it's not like you're going to be pulling out but if you were to i think that would be a location that is definitely helpful to track because you can't just black box it and say all right i'm sending money to this account um but it's not, you're not going to withdraw from it. It's kind of hard, you know, you're going to withdraw from it eventually. You just don't know when that is. So I've always kind of had 
trouble with that uh, you know, brokerage account, those, you know, crypto wallet accounts, kind of stuff around that, because it's like, how do you, tra- what do you describe, how do you track that is obviously you want to call it an asset at that point and you don't want to black box it, but it's like the, then do you track the nominal value at a certain day? Well, or yeah. Do you and track it, it at, you know, once a quarter, you say, all right, this is the value of it. I'm going to just mark it as such and then leave the account as is. I didn't know if you had any kind of way you manage that or include that in, your own personal finances. So I think what you're saying is there's there's no special handling for those types of things for for right. those for those types of financial vehicles, uh, which are going to need more, you know, kind of convoluted ways to account Hands-on, for sure. how they. Yeah. So so like while this you could hack your way around getting this to work, right? That's not what this is meant for. This is meant for a personal budgeting system. Right. But I think an important part of that is kind of managing where where do those assets go? Are you investing in other, other things? And I mean, I, you know, you think of a revenue stream, right? And you look at it and you go, it's, it, you know, it's a revenue. It's coming in. Is that just your job? Is that I'm collecting dividends? Is that I'm collecting, you know, money from my side gigs? And I, I think of those kind of, you know, am I doing other things besides putting manual labor in for some kind of return and payment out um, that's out there is what I kind of think of. And, you know, revenue, you can get in all kinds of different revenue streams and accounts, but uh, that's kind of what I think of when I see those. So uh, without getting too much into that, uh, I described the four that are out there. I described, I believe, uh, the asset accounts, um, basically their normal bank accounts in this situation. Uh, they can be created with a negative balance. Unfortunately, you know, that, that happens. They can be created with a negative balance. Um, the other thing to note, you, it looked like there, were, there was a feature there was wor- they were working on, or he was working on, uh, with shared accounts. So Firefly 3, you can stand up for multiple, multiple people can use the same instance, which is an awesome feature. That means you and, you know, your friends or whoever can use it. And, you know, if you have a special significant other, uh, they can use it as well. The one thing I saw they were working on right now is shared asset accounts. So like a shared checking account. Um, right now, I think it's just view only. So one person owns it and the other person is just a view only, I believe. Um, it's, they kind of noted you can't actually share assets between accounts yet. So there, it sounds like there's something, they made a note of it, they're working on it, but it's not fully available yet to share those accounts. Um, and then you get into expenses, expense accounts. And the great example is there's just a, a list of basically every vendor uh, in the document. If you look in the documentation, every vendor that's out there, you know, Amazon's a big one, uh, and, you know, the grocery store, which just basically wherever you buy stuff. Uh, when you spend money, you do so at a store, online, or maybe using cash. Each of these places gets its own expense account. So that's kind of a spooky one to see at the end of the month if you're uh, a frequent Amazon shopper. <laughs> Uh, and then there's the revenue account, which I already kind of discussed. Um, for most people, this is just going to be income from a job or, you know, any kind of signed hustles or any kind of place where you're receiving inflow of cash. Um, and then at, you have cash accounts similar to asset accounts, basically to track cash. And then you have your liabilities. Um, it supports liabilities such as debt and loans essentially with this it's you know it's a liability right a loan you owe money to someone that you owe some money so owe money to someone a mortgage you're, you're gonna owe money to someone in the bank so fine there, there are liability accounts out there um it tracks these four uh the one thing i'll also note that firefly 3 doesn't have is if you are if you do a personal loan out to somebody there's right now there's no way to track this now they have mentioned that this is something that they are going to look into and also create but essentially if someone owes you money right now it sounded like there was a con not a convoluted but a a little bit of a complex way to track it it was like create a revenue account link to some Mm -hmm. other type of account uh to manage to track this and just make it reoccurring so that you can manage if it's coming in or not 
uh, on those payments from someone else, but they don't have a specific tool for tracking. You know, I gave X so much money on whatever day they owe me over the course of the next whatever year is this percent interest. So there's no perfect way to do that yet. Um, it sounds like if you would like to do that, there is a way to do it. But that's all I have for the accounts. A lot of it is accounting based. Um, as I mentioned, you know, you get the double double entry accounting that's embedded in there. But I don't know if there's anything else I want to include within here or if you have anything you want me to clarify. I feel like I just talked and rambled a little bit on those four types of accounts, really. Uh, I didn't know if there's anything else you thought I should include or anything else, you know, maybe you wanted to cover cover that you think I may have missed or forgot. Well, I would I would just do the same thing that I do with, with all of these services. I mean, there's a reason why we pick the things that we do. Um, yeah. And, and one of the criteria that we look at is, is what does the documentation look like? And it's great. Yeah, I link to it in our documentation because there's not a lot left out from theirs or what they have. Yeah. And, and you went through a lot of different uh, examples, hypotheticals and you know what kind of, kind of explaining, you know, what, what these accounts are. There's, there's no way to do that except for to, to give uh, real world scenarios. And, and they go really in depth uh, into that here in, in their documentation. Um, and this is really only in in the concepts section. They have they have plenty of of different things in their documentation. So that's that's a lot to go through. Um, and I think what we're going to be trying to do with this is just highlight the ones that are necessary, the most important. Yeah. Yeah. I had one more thing. I forgot.